Um, this is a great little get together we, we've arranged for tonight. And one of the great reasons that we live here in New Hampshire is a very special opportunity for each of us to meet and personally interact with the people who lead our country. That is why tonight is such a special one for me, my family, the state, and the country. This country continues to struggle with unemployment greater than 9%. Tonight, we will have the privilege to hear from someone who is the governor of Texas, creating an environment that has led to the formation of more new jobs than any other governor in the nation. Yeah. This is the type of leadership that is what our country needs now more than ever. So again, I want to thank you all for coming, and it is my extreme pleasure to introduce the next President of the United States, Governor yeah. Yeah. some weather like this in Texas. I think it's about two days out of the year. So, uh, but anyway, it, it's, it's, it's really a, a great honor for Anita and I to be out here and, and particularly in their backyard and um, getting up to New Hampshire. Just, you know, I'm a, I'm a former Air Force captain and a, and a pilot in the United States Air Force. And um, I know... Let me tell you, I've got one right here. With this young lady. Nia, the love of my life, and, and, uh, I, I shared in my, my remarks as we kicked this off that uh, we dated for 16 years. I'm, I'm a rather persistent fellow. And, uh, but uh, the, the gifts of that uh, are here with us as well, of, of a great uh, union, and, and our children are with us. And, I don't, I'll hit right over here. Griffin uh, is our son and his beautiful wife, Meredith, and then the other beautiful little girl out of the air is Sydney Kerr, uh, the baby girl. Me and I, let me tell you, we've got a great respect for the first in the nation uh, uh, primary that you all have here, and one of the reasons we're here, and I think you're very wise, folks want to come and see you. Uh, they want to visit with you, and they want to talk. Uh, about the issues that are important to uh, the people of, of this, not just this state, but of this country. And uh, I'm going to try to whip through these remarks pretty quick, and we'll have a little Q&A. And, and uh, Chris, hopefully, if I can't handle any of the big questions, I'm just going to pitch them over to you, if that's all right. So anyway, um, listen, we, we flew immediately here after announcing in, in uh, South Carolina. Uh, and, and the reason was obvious. Uh, I intend to compete for every vote in every state. Uh, this isn't a strategy just to go to a few places. We're going to be all across this country. And hopefully, uh, during one of my uh, many visits up here to the Granite State, uh, y'all just kind of let me rub on that Stanley Cup a little bit. So, uh, I, might be, I might get me a little luck out of that. So, uh, anyway, I feel right at home amongst people whose motto is live free or die. Yeah. <laughs> coined that phrase, um, and, and what I love about it is you don't need a teleprompter to, uh, uh, to, to use it. I mean, it's just right there, and you just spit it right out. And, and uh, it, it kind of it reminds me of the, the closing remarks in a letter that uh, Colonel Travis wrote from a place called the Alamo, and he penned these three words, victory or death. And I think New Hampshireites and the folks in the Granite State understand exactly what that would mean. Um, we Texans like to speak directly as well. But you can't live free if you've got a federal government that takes over one-sixth of our economy, like they're trying to do with our health care. You can't live free knowing your children are going to inherit a mountain of debt. You can't live free if you don't have the dignity of having a job or the income to take care of your family. Washington's insatiable
desire to spend our children's inheritance on these failed stimulus plans, other misguided economic policies have given us record debt and left far too many people without a job in this country. And of course, we're being told we're in a recovery right now. <laughs> but it sure doesn't feel like a recovery of those people who are out of work, those 9% of Americans that don't have a job, millions more who are only been able to find part-time work, those who have stopped even looking for a job. doesn't feel like a recovery to them. One in six work-eligible Americans cannot find a full-time job. That is an economic disaster. Yeah. And for those, for those Americans who do have full-time jobs, they aren't experiencing economic recovery because you're seeing fuel prices that continue to go up, food prices that are continuing to rise. Recovery is a meaningless word. Uh, if, if the bank is foreclosed on your house, if you're upside down on your mortgage, if your credit card debt is completely maxed out, and what are we supposed to say to our children when two out of every five dollars gets stacked on their back as debt? What do, we, what do we tell them? What do we say to them? What were you doing in 2012, Mom? What were you doing in 2012, Dad? We're going to tell them, oh, don't worry, Washington's had some 17 debt or entitlement commissions in the last 30 years. That's what they did. They just didn't have the courage to do anything. How can the wealthiest nation on the face of the earth fail so miserably to pay its bills? I look right into those cameras and I say, Mr. President, you can't win the future by selling it off to foreign creditors. Yeah. I have led based on a few guiding principles. Number one is don't spend all of the money. <laughs> Number two is have a tax burden that is as light as it can be on job creators and still get the, the essential services taken care of. Number three is have uh, regulations that are fair and predictable. And the fourth is have a legal system that keeps the, the frivolous lawsuits at bay, that doesn't paralyze the employers that are trying to create jobs out there. <laughs> That's what we followed that simple recipe in Texas for the last decade, and since June of 2009, Texas is responsible for 40% of all the new jobs created in America. Now think about that for a minute. We're about 8 to 9% of the total population of America. But 40% of all the jobs created were in the state of Texas. And, and you know that recipe that I just talked about works. I think y'all call it the New Hampshire Advantage. <laughs> and uh, you, your new Republican legislature this year, they said no to new taxes. It takes courage to stand up and, and to just, you know, tell people and say, we're going to have to pay, we're going to have to cut back because we can't mortgage our future just because we've spent this money historically. Right. And, and, you know, I, I happen to think that if you want to send the most powerful message across New England, you override your governor's veto of that uh, right to work law. <laughs> in the Northeast, you'll be the only state in this part of the country that's a right to work and there will be people come in droves to, to work, to create their future, to raise their kids, and to have a great life in New Hampshire. It is a great privilege to, to stand before you and just kind of share with you as I wrap up here in all seriousness last week that the tax and spend and borrow agenda of this president 
has led to the first ever downgrade of the credit rating of the United States of America. It's a sad day in our history. In reality, though, it's just the first of a number of recent downgrades. Fact is, nearly for three years now that President Obama has been in office, he's been downgrading American jobs. He's been downgrading our standing in the world. He's been downgrading our financial stability, downgrading the hope of a better future for our children. It's time to get America working, folks, and that's the reason I am announcing my candidacy today to be President of the United States. Four more years of rising unemployment, rising taxes, rising debt, rising energy dependence on nations that truly will do us harm if given the opportunity. We do not have to accept our current circumstances. We will change them because we are Americans. <laughs> we'll limit and we'll simplify our taxes. We'll stop spending money we don't have. We'll get our fiscal house in order and restore our good credit. We will repeal this president's misguided, one-size-fits-all, government-run health care plan. Yeah. I promise you this. I will work every day to make Washington, D.C. as inconsequential in your life as I can. States Constitution has real meaning. It includes keeping Washington from messing around in your daily lives. Growing up in a small farming community out in a place that frankly has just got a name, don't try to find it on the map, there is no zip code. Um, helping my family grow cotton and wheat. Um, <laughs> living my first few uh, years in the luxury of a house that didn't have indoor plumbing. Um, wearing clothes that my mother had hand sewn in a lot of instances. I do not believe the greatness of America is found in the size of our government. It's found in the resourcefulness of our people. Yeah. We are a great country. We are a great country because of the enduring ideals, because of the ingenuity of the private sector, because of faith and family and freedom that are woven into the fabric of who we are and what we stand for. I believe in America. I believe in her purpose and her promise. I believe her best days have not yet been lived. I believe the greatest deeds have not been recorded in the annals of history. And with your help, with the grace of God, we will get America working again. God bless you and thank you all for coming out. question again and, and uh, Deputy Speaker thank you both for, for being here incredible hospitality and, and uh, I, I, I know you both were in, in San Antonio Texas uh, just this last week and it was a real honor to get to visit with you there but thank you for reciprocating and, and I think you, out, you outdid us <laughs> uh, in Texas even so thank you Bill uh, let's open it up to uh, y'all holler out a question I'll repeat it and then away we go yes sir in the blue